Hi, this is Regina with Simone B. Catering, and you're listening to the Hawk and Bell Podcast. Hua. Hua? Nobody say no Hua. Say the Army Bell. Test, test, one, two, one, two. How do you say it? Boo school me. Maybe I deserve a spanking for that. <laughs> And they measurements shouldn't it fall together like these words and these letters. I've been thinking I'm far too clever. Do I need to do better than just showing off my demeanor? Might pull out an umbrella, cause they say he rain forever. <laughs> I'm trying to get myself together, dog. Oh, I'm trying to shelter in this weather, dog. Oh, seems like I've been lost for forever, dog. Oh, I'm trying to piece it all together. Find another way. I'm so down, so down, so down. Oh God, oh God. Find another way. I'm so down, so down, so down. Oh God, oh God. Find another way. I'm so down, so down, so down. Oh God, oh God. Find another way. I'm so down, so down, so. Hear me out as I confess. A series of unfortunate events My turn into a two-faced like Harvey Dent Can depend on the circumstances of my life You know I gotta take my chances Cause life weighs you down when you least constant And strife comes around when you least expect it When you're trying to get it right, others trying to correct it As if that ever came that close to perfection I just wanna fulfill my passion I put it to action, am I ready? It ain't even a question I die for a cause, make the whole world pause But at the end of the day, I don't need no applause I just give it to you raw, couldn't dip it like a star I want to come to the numbers, I pursue my call <laughs> Man, I swear I got it all planned out I just wanna stand out but the angle happened never, never get the cracking up in any page in the plans now. It's in his hands, it's in his hands. Everyone's fate is in his hands. But making mistakes is the choice that you pick. When people my sin, do you understand? Or you don't wanna listen to this music? Cause you ashamed of living what is true. Art is just art, don't get it confused. Infuse a message and don't try to refuse. Ain't no fire if no one like the fuse. My desire is for you to be you. Cause I stay working on myself. Oh God, so help me. Find another way. I'm so down, so down, so down. Oh God, oh God. Find another way. I'm so down, so down, so down. Oh God, oh God. Find another way. I'm so down, so down, so down. Oh God, oh God. Find another way. I'm so down, so down, so. I'm trying to find another way. I'm so down, so down, so down. Oh God, oh God. I'm trying to find another way. I'm so down, so down, so down. Oh God, oh God. I'm trying to find another way. I'm so down, so down, so down. Oh God, oh God. I'm trying to find another way. I'm so down. Welcome back to the Hawk and Bell Podcast. And why are you looking at it like that? <laughs> you looking at my reaction? 
Ladies and gentlemen, listen to the Hawk and Bell podcast production by 30 Parkwood. I am Hawk, and to my right, as per usual, we have... Whoop, whoop, Bella Rama. A.K.A. Bella Fonte, A.K.A. Bell, stop playing. (laughs) She's back in the building. We is another episode, episode uh, 13 or 14, something like that. I don't know the numbers because we do in between episodes and when bell's not here i was told recently that people don't want to listen to the podcast when i'm by myself so i hate all, everyone uh who have said that and... thank you we love <laughs> it we over here love hearing that indeed indeed on the bell team so we we have a lot of topics and a lot of little side questions or side um comments to go over but I want to make let's let's address something that is immediate. You sent me a text earlier this week. I did. Yeah, and we had a lot of few. I, I I posted the gist of the text um, on social media, and there was a lot of commentary um, from, especially from the from the females. And I actually want to read the text out loud and kind of discuss your thought process of when you wrote it. You wrote for your future reference because your time is so limited. Please do not commit yourself to anything outside of time, outside of time with family, unless you have discussed it with me prior. So I feel like you trying to pull my card. Who are you as my wife to tell me what to do? Oh, I was very hot. Very hot. And I think that that text message actually was very cordial of me because I was livid. I was about to pick the phone up and let you know something. But, um... Respecting you as the male and the male head of this household, um, you made a decision, executive decision, and I didn't necessarily have the drop, drop back of that situation to really question too much at that point. So I just let it be, as well as I'm not going to make you choose between seeking gold and or being with the family. So I wasn't really going to bring up this, the like the but I guess the context of the, of what was going on kind of matters. Uh, so what ended up happening, you and I was at a picnic, and directly after the picnic, this was on Memorial Day, uh, I was asked to cover because uh, at our church we have prayer hours three times a day. Um, one of the people. Twenty one days a week. Twenty one. Uh, Twenty one. How days. many days, <laughs> Bill? How many days are in a week? Twenty one times. <laughs> Seven days a week. That's what I meant. Yeah. Twenty one so prayer times. There are opportunities as twenty one opportunities to come in and pray for an hour or however long you want to do it. Yeah. And the person that had the particular prayer hour at that time wasn't uh he was out of state. So I was asked to cover it and um I didn't call Bell to, you know, because I don't only have technically only have one day off a week. So I didn't call Bell and when the person asked me, I was like, you know, and in my mind, in my thinking, well, Bell's probably asleep. It's only an hour. Boom. Uh, I'm gonna go cover it. I hadn't even made it home, y'all. Yeah, yeah. And, and so, and, and so there, there was a, you know, there's a rolling story after that. But long story short, I didn't call Bell, you know, to coordinate and make sure that happened. And so some of the comments that came back, Tiff, I th- was she the first one to comment? I, I think she was. If she was the first, what? So shout out to Tiff. Shout out to Tiff. This is what Tiff said, and she doesn't know that you already do this. She was like, "Hawk, you need to sync your calendar with her calendar, uh, in terms of the phones." But you was on that already. Yeah, we've been had that. I just don't um don't change it to family status all the time. Well, I know I didn't like. I knew that it was a possibility, but when I put stuff in my calendar, I didn't until you showed me that there's a family. Um, when I hit it on when when it so for me it's home, family, and work. There's three different calendars the thing, of the right? same day. Or for the listeners that, that don't know, for if you have an iPhone, if you plug something in your iPhone calendar and you don't hit family, it won't pop up on both our phones. It'll only pop up on my phone. So that's what I was doing, even though I was seeing all of your alerts every time you put something on a family calendar. Because I was setting it to family calendar. Right. Because I don't let you see the other ones because I actually do it for my billing, for my work purposes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but um, I conscientiously do that to make sure that you know or a, as a reminder for you to have because for example say a dental appointment is coming up i'm the one who made the dental appointment you're not necessarily going to know or remember 
I'm, I'll communicate it to you, but in case I don't directly communicate it to you, I can just check the phone. That way, I've set an alert for you to have, as well as provide the information on there for you to have. So, so you've already been on that, and then uh, James, her husband, uh, he hit up. He was like, "Yeah, Tiff did that for me," and I ended up talking to Tiff right before you had called me, like the day after, and uh, she was like. James did the same thing where he was double booking days and he was committing himself to different things. And she was like, uh, uh, brother, <laughs> we got other stuff we got going on. And so it's just kind of like, this is the product of when you have one, two working parents, you have, uh, people who are running on separate schedules. This is part like I, ladies and gentlemen, there's so much that, that I just don't know until I start messing up and then it's like, Oh, okay. Part of communication. Well, this is my thing. Forget a schedule. You have the day off that you typically would be working. That shouldn't even be a question. You're not scheduling anything else other than family, in my opinion. Right. Because how often do we have you in the evenings to share with? So even if we said we're not doing a thing, we're just going to sit at the table and stare at each other <laughs> for the rest of the evening. Mm-hmm then that's all we're going to be doing if that's what it means for us to spend time as a family. And I, and I sarcastically, I say, who are you to tell me or text me and whatnot? Like no, I, said, I got that. I know you're not serious. Yeah. And, and for our listeners, um, I was totally in the wrong, you know, and I already apologized about that. And is, is learn from my mistake where you don't, don't take the attitude that I'm just going to do. And, and Belle, you know, she, she gave the accolades on the man house and blah, blah, blah. However, when it comes to spending time with your family and prioritizing and make sure everything is in line, um, being a man of the house or being a leader has nothing to do with coordinating and making sure that you do check in. And it, it's just one, it's a courtesy Two, um, and again, in my case where my time is limited, I do, and that was something I, I did have problems with in the past where it's like, I'm going to do this, this, and this, and then my family gets like 10 minutes, and then I'm going to do this, this, and this, and then my family gets five minutes, and it just, if you allow it, and I'm lazy, I'm talking about, it's not just, you know, your church responsibilities or anything, but if you allow it, life responsibilities will consume you if you don't, if you literally, it's kind of like, for me, this is my analogy, I have a whole pie, a sweet potato pie in front of me. I can sit and eat a whole sweet potato pie. However, I have to commit myself saying, hey, I'm going to eat one slice. I'm going to push that pie away. When it comes to life responsibilities, I'm going to do this one thing, but I, all the rest of the stuff got to push away so that I can prioritize and bring this other part, part back. So when I text you back, okay, um, I, couldn't ha- I couldn't even dare have an attitude behind it because, again, I messed up and I should have communicated, you know, do that. And like I said, the, when the person asked me to do it, my first mind was to call my wife and be like, hey, yo, this is what's going on. Is everything cool? But like I said, just off the top, I was like, well, you know, because you had just left the picnic. I was like, there's no way in the world that she's going to want to do something. She's hot. It was like 90 degrees outside. You're going to be tired, blah, blah, blah. So, Well, I had already committed to spending time with family. Right. Yeah. And I was with my family. Yeah, go so. figure. On top of that, ladies and gentlemen, and then she was with um, her, her, her. I was gonna say your natural family. I still got foster care on my mind. You was with your dad and your stepmoms and and brothers and sisters. And so when you text me, I was supposed to be with you all going to the movie theater. And here I am, separating, isolating myself. So yeah, it was it was a yeah, bad situation so all around. My family put the pressure on. Talking about <laughs> where's he at? Uh, <sighs> skipping over to the family. Well, today's episode, we'll discuss what's wrong, um, the, what's the wrong way to approach a woman. Uh, we'll talk about bad first dates. And speaking of bad first dates, when we come back from break, we're going to listen to, uh, and I have not listened to this uh, voicemail yet. It's a voicemail from Chris. Uh, I, I ain't going to say his last name because I don't, I literally, I have no idea what he wrote. He sent me, I, I asked everyone to, Uh-oh. I asked everyone to send me a message, talk about your first bad internet first date i made it very specific because internet, bad date? uh I, that's what i asked specifically but i don't know what he put on there i don't know what he understood so we'll see if he follows the instruction and we'll see what kind of story it was five minutes long so this is he's a good at stories man yeah he, he really is he has he also has a youtube page where he goes over he's a big gamer um i think his name is hadu lee h-a-d-o-u space l-e-e and uh he's really into i call it japanimation Y'all, I don't know what they call it now. 
What's that? I'll edit this part. Chris? Not Chris from Virginia. Oh, okay. Chris from Fayetteville. Okay, State. no, that's why I was saying he has really good stories. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, no, not that Chris. We're talking that's about, why uh, I was like, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this is Chris at uh, Fayetteville State. Um, and we're just going gonna to hear his story. We're going to discuss, you know, we'll keep the mics on as we listen to it. Because, like I said, we'll experience it for the first time. And then we'll talk about uh, whatever else really is on our hearts. It'll be more music, more conversation and more fun stay locked in listen to the hock and bell podcast on youtube productions of 30 parkwood and we'll be right back don't click that mouse we'll be right back hawk and bell podcast yeah yeah i'm not gonna do it nike i'm still not gonna do it like i did it on the last go it's been some time not trying to catch up to the No, not even gonna let you down I'm not gonna fall, no one Even if I do, I got a prop That would keep me on solid ground And I got you back when I get there Marshland, I, I won't let you step there See, I'm a stepchild No elevator Adjusting that few screws Loose in the regulator None uncollected or missing antisocial So when the family picks the popular mama The moment is going to patrol it In need of a savior People we greater Who can keep us together forever For better or worse Reverse on the curse Blessing the steps Lessons I stress Record what's next Professional test And I'm not gonna feel No give it all up
welcome uh welcome welcome you're listening to the hawk and bell podcast uh, i am hawk in case you didn't know and to my right we have Bell, bell aka bell for president aka bella fonte aka uh lady bell don <laughs> she remembered that so she left a comment on my instagram a while ago and she was like uh go ahead lady bell i like, where'd she get that from and then I remember our very first episode, that's what you was going by for a little bit, Lady Bell. So. Well, that's what I had said. Yeah, yeah. so she shout out to Don for that. She to she... laugh at me. Yo, she remembered that. That's, that's really dope of you. Um, I'm sorry. We're not going to go over the Facebook comments of your first dates and all that because I can't. Y'all know how Facebook is. If you post so many things, it loses track. So I'm going to try to go off memory before we discuss all that. But in this particular segment, we're going to listen to stories. <laughs> Again, this is a story. Me and Bill are hearing this for the very first time. Uh, we're going to leave the mics on and we're going to play this back. And uh, this should be interesting. This is Chris's story about his first bad Internet date. All right, so this is a crazy story when I was younger, roughly around the age of 16. And um, at that time, we had the internet, but we didn't use the internet to meet other people. So we used to use chat lines to meet females, so you know we can go out, have dates, and you know, just kind of build a relationship. So we used the chat line, and we met two females that lived close in the neighborhood. So and um, me and the about. guys, we, we thought to go over there in a pretty big mass to see if we can get a date or perhaps get lucky. So it's Shut about up, maybe 10 boys at these two girls' houses, and we're just having fun. We're dancing. We're running around. We're eating all the snacks out of the icebox. I mean, we're just <laughs> going crazy he over said there. Ice box. And it got real late. And by this time, their father pulled up. Now, at this point moment, they only had one door that worked. So <laughs> none of us could get out the door. So the thing we did was everyone hit. Like their daughter, the two girls just, just panicked. So we all hid in the closet. And like I think about maybe like four other uh, boys hid under the bed. So in all, it was <laughs> 10 boys in the house. And it was two Latino girls. So the father gets off, he's all tired, and he comes in the house. So one of the things the, the two girls did was they stripped down to their drawers and they closed the room door, you know? You're not going to come come in the room while your daughter is getting dressed. Oh my but the issue here was that there's 10 boys <laughs> hiding in this house. <laughs> there's 10 boys hiding in this room. Oh, and I'm not going to lie to you, we're all hiding, we're all terrified, and... Some of us is musty, yes. So, the dad comes, he knocks on the door, he's like, are y'all okay? They say, yeah, but, you know, the father felt something, like something wasn't right. He could look in his daughter's eyes, and he knew something was wrong. He didn't even notice how bad the house was towed up. He just knew something was definitely off. So, he forces himself in the room. And he's looking around, he's like, it smells musty in here, you know? And the daughters are terrified because you can hear them kind of whine a little bit. And at this point moment, we who are in the closet, we are starting to tremble. And he looks around and he opens up the closet door where we're hiding at. So at this point moment, I'm not gonna lie, I start to urinate on myself. I am so terrified. I have never been this terrified in my whole entire life. And all the boys were, were all just kind of shaking. So when you're scared like this, logic is not really kick, kicking in. You know, when you're scared, you do things that you most likely wouldn't do. You were thinking. So my idea was this close the door. Maybe he'll walk away. Maybe he'll just, you know, he'll just vanish. So I politely closed the door in his face. I mean, he was, he, he opened the closet door. I politely closed the door back, you know? So at this point moment, it gets real quiet and he rips the closet door off oh and everyone just loses their stuff. We're just terrified and he's going crazy. He's yelling, he's screaming. So the boy beside me, we're all hugging each other. We're, we're like hugging each other and I'm not gonna lie, the bottom of their closet is soaked. <laughs> That's how terrified I was. And the little boy beside me, he asked the guy, are you going to kill us? And he walks out and we're, we didn't run. We couldn't run because we didn't know where he was going. Now, in my 
opinion. I thought he was going to get a gun, but I didn't want to run, and I run directly into him. So we all just kind of sit there hugging. Now, don't forget, there's still about four to five boys also hiding under the bed. So he comes back in. He's speaking in Spanish. He's screaming. He's cussing. I mean, I knew the cuss words. And I guess he had a change of heart, and he told us to get out of his house, leave right now. So me and the boys in the closet, we start to walk out. But the other boys who was under the bed, he didn't know about them at first. So once they noticed that we were walking out, they tried to sneak out at the same time. Now, I was really, really fast. So I ran out the house. I was halfway down the road by this time. And once he found out that there was also boys hiding under the bed, I could hear him screaming from down the road in the house. It was just insane. And, um... I have never really been that scared in my life. That was something that I will always remember. And uh, I can say one thing. We didn't go back to their house. We did not go back to their house. Never again. You know, we just left them alone. I was just happy that we was able to leave and keep our life. But uh, that was one of the dating stories that uh, I went on when I was younger. All right. Um, Chris. That was a great story. <laughs> oh, wow. Yo, I I'm mean, impressed. He's still living. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, it's so much to unpack. <laughs> it's so, like, I... So, he he did say that he was 16, right? Yeah, he was 16. Yeah, like and so, I can only imagine... One... He's, let's say that he kind of he exaggerated how many boys was there but the fact that it was a lot of boys there and two girls all met on the internet what were they planning on doing the girls yeah you invited all these men they probably thought they gonna get their they were gonna get their choose and their pick of the litter uh, you know what I'm saying because it's not like you know I'm, their options open I'm not trying to be crass, but it's like it's not like they was planning on running a train or anything because none of these men knew each other. So it's like that obviously. Well, I'm thinking maybe the girls thought they were gonna get their pick of the litter, or maybe somebody didn't show up or whatever not. Um, but probably it was that that they were wanting their options to be open. Yeah, yeah, uh, and and I, you know, and, and Chris, you know, and, and Chris because I know him personally. I, he's not the type of dude that goes around like that, you know. I know he he probably legitimately probably had fun, depending on the kind of conversation. As you said, as we heard, he ate all the food in the ice box. Chris, I know you was raised by some old people. They don't why they call refrigerators ice boxes anymore, dude. <laughs> but he, you know, he ate all the food, and so for him, because he mentioned that, I felt like that was like the the emphasis, and that's what he enjoyed. So I can see that, and he comes from a world. Again, based on personal knowledge, he comes from a world where it is male dominated in terms of the gaming and all that. So I can legit see him having fun in that environment. Now, me, on the other hand, I walk into a house and it's majority of men and only two females. I'm not I'm not staying. That's that's one. That's weird. I actually had a situation like that. I met a girl at the club. She invited me to her house like a week later. I went up there and she had a bunch of random dudes in her house. None of them were family members. And she was like, Just yeah, that's random obviously i mean because i've been in a group setting with like 15 of us and maybe six of us maybe are females the rest are guys but that's when we were at you know like at cherry point or whatever so that's understandable just because of the dynamics of the area that you had, you're not going to have as many females but you had five of your friends with you yeah, well, we all knew each other, all of us, males, females, because we used to all go dancing together. I was by so myself. We strangers. I didn't know anybody, and I just met this young lady. So it's like, she, and she told me to sit on the couch, and I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Like, I don't know. She knew all the sit dudes. Sit on the couch, take a number. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I felt. That's exactly how I felt. So I, I stayed like maybe 30 minutes. Her son was downstairs, it was his birthday. I got him a little gift, and then I broke out, and I never talked to her again because I just it actually happened to me twice, and it might be because of the military Why would situation. You just stay there. I was curious, like I was wondering, like is this the like the audacity of her? Like, did she think her pimp hand was so strong that she can keep all of us? Like, I'm really, I, psycho psychologically speaking, I wanted to figure the situation well, out. Well, she's a good planner. 
or organizer anyway. Because she organized to have y'all all in the same room and keep y'all there. Yeah. Now, um, I seen her a couple of weeks later and, uh, you know, she chased me down and was trying to get my attention. Maybe I read the situation wrong, but it didn't feel right. And so I broke out. And, I, and when I was in Jacksonville, same thing happened. This one girl, um, she'd been pushing up on me forever in a day. And we had went, she stayed in some projects called Sandy Run. Everybody who's from Jacksonville, North Carolina knows these projects. And uh, we had went there at the time I used to smoke weed and I went to go get a drop. And I was going, I was walking by an apartment and her door just so happened to be open. I looked and I see her hugging and kissing some dude. I didn't care. I didn't even find a girl attractive. It was just something funny uh, to be around. And she had called me minutes after. She didn't see me. But she was, hey, what are you doing? You want to come by? Blah, blah, blah. She didn't know I was already at the building, down, literally downstairs. So I was like, nah, I'm good. We're going to da da da. So um, that was that. But yeah, Chris, fantastic story. Awesome story. Yeah. Appreciate you. And the brother said he was peeing on himself. Yeah, he left so, him. Soon. And he has the nerve to be offended that other dudes in there was musty. Dude, you smell like piss. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, and Chris ain't no small dude. Chris, like, 6'2", 6'3", you know, but. Well, I mean, he wouldn't have been that tall at 16. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, well, I, oh, well, yeah, you're well, right. probably close to it, but not necessarily 16. And you're 16 against a grown man whose two yeah. daughters is half naked. <sighs> that was his all That around. dude was probably dying laughing when he stepped out. And that's probably why he had a change of heart. Yeah. To let you guys go. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't even imagine what he did to those other dudes when he saw trying to sneak that way because <laughs> first of all there's a smell in the room yeah there's dudes in the closet now there's dudes in there in the bed yeah y'all aren't properly dressed yeah that's the part that's unpacking like so that as a dad my whole house now is becoming suspect now I'm opening every yes. door I'm kicking down books <laughs> oh my goodness so yeah uh, you know I was trying to think um, cause I'm not going, I don't want to tell a long story. Do you have, uh, not an internet, but just a bad dating story? I don't know if it would really technically be a dating story, but I know when, <laughs> when we first met and, um, Oh yeah. my goodness. <laughs> How did I skip that? Like legit. We first, we just met. Y'all came um, to the home. Shout yep. out to Vic. Shout out to Vic. And um, we hung out. We played cards. You know, we drank a little bit. We were just chill, hanging out. Mm. And um, I guess my roommate failed to let <laughs> Vic know that um, I, somebody else was involved in the picture. Yo. So involved that he actually had stuff. In the house, in the apartment. Yeah, he was living there. Yeah. yeah. So, um, old boy comes after the club, what, two, three o'clock in the morning, banging the door down, talking about, I know there's some dudes in there. Let me in. I want to get my PlayStation. Ladies blah, and gentlemen, blah, blah. he was the big bad wolf. <laughs> he was huffing and puffing, and he didn't just do it for a few minutes. Oh, no. The whole night. He the did not. The police had to come. I don't know if you remember, we had called the police. The police had to come. They had to mitigate the situation and allow him to come in and get his items. And um, after that, he had to leave. But he came back, I think, like 6, 7 o'clock in the morning with co with his cousins and stuff. Mm -hmm. Trying to get into the house again. Yeah. He was we can Now, what I was doing, what me and Vic was doing, meanwhile, because, of course, we're in separate bedrooms. And I'm talking to Bill. Uh, Vic is talking to, to the roommate. And we're hearing this dude knock, and he's knocking for hours. And so me and Vic is coming up with a game plan, like, all right, we can go out and we can assault this dude, and we can handle business. But unfortunately, well, fortunately, you were plotting. You remember you were plotting to hit him with your cast. No, no, I didn't. Oh, I we, didn't could, we could take care of the situation right now. I didn't have a cast on at that time. Well, I know you had broke your wrist. At I had time. broken my wrist. You I, hadn't I had didn't get it. Yet. I didn't get it fixed. And so you had took some tape and you wrapped my wrist up oh that's what i did yeah, yeah. and so i was like because i really wasn't in condition to be punching anyone but i was like i don't really see a way out of this and he's the dude started trying to break in by using a credit card we can hear him scratch. yes he was he was banging on that door he was kicking the door 
He was doing everything to that door. He would not go away. And so, yeah, so Vic and I was like, well, I guess we're going to have to take and care of And I guess I was just more pissed that we were in this situation. And it was her fault. <laughs> it was her fault. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what happens when you're trying to have your cake and eat it too. Yeah, buddy. She yeah. saw Vic and just lost her mind. Now, <laughs> and, and so I was about to say, I can't, I can't blame her all the way because she didn't know that she was going to meet uh, such a charming young man and that we, like. I mean, but then how are y'all supposed to see us the first day we meet? Yeah, I I was nuts. I'm for surprised y'all didn't bail. We should have <laughs> right at that moment. We we should have. That was like that was, but because we come from in terms of we was in the Marine Corps at the time, uh, we've been in some really weird situations. I so, like the drama. I think that's what it was. Maybe there might be some like yeah. it, it got the blood going. That so. hype. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that that actually probably that was my. I didn't even think about that. I'm thinking about that some was the old first time that we ever met. On the very first time, sure it was. We had some, and I didn't. And I, at that time, I didn't know if the dude was there for her or for you. Like all I know is that dude really wanted to come in, and then when the police brought him in, and he picked up, he had a PlayStation and his clothes and all that. Like, oh, wait a minute, this dude lives here. Mm -hmm. He's part of this situation. So yeah. No, yeah. she was playing it real dumb. <laughs> she had no idea he was just stalking her and blah blah blah. Ooh, hey. And then to make it worse, the plot thickens. He was paying a portion of. The oh, apartment. Bro, you put everything out there. <laughs> you well, ain't because back. I didn't even know that either. And yeah. I was actually staying there. Yeah. Yeah. So that was so, all. So, I mean, dude was all in his right. I actually felt bad. If I ever saw a dude again, I'd apologize because I had no idea. So, um, what's the worst way or what has been one of the worst come ons? Um, I'm, I'm asking you that in terms of like in your experience and, and dealing with us as men. Um, if you have an experience a bad time or a bad approach, some of your maybe your friends told you men have done this. I can tell you what I've done. Very embarrassing on my part, but like I said, it you know, I'm no no excuse. It was very embarrassing. We uh we went to Bike Week in Myrtle Beach, and um that's just a different environment. So, so I've heard <laughs> it is, and uh. Instead of me talking to women, I would slap them on the butt to get their attention. I think you and everybody else that was there. But the girls responded and they would come back when I did that. And so, Well, I think most females that go out there know that they're going to get groped in some way, shape, or fashion. Yeah. Because that's the... Um, just the rapport that that, that environment, environment has. Mm -hmm. And... Okay, so that doesn't justify getting groped. No, no, not at all. But knowing that this is the environment you're going to go into, and on top of that, wearing almost next to nothing. Right. What do you think you're calling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and that's what, it was an invitation you're in that calling environment. calling no lawyer to come and help you, or no doctor yeah. to help you out, or, you know... Now, is now, what's what's kind of unfair about that statement is that it is the beach, and I should have self control, just like every man that was there. But uh, there was definitely way more men. There were females there. Are G strings allowed on the beach here? Uh, at that time, no. Even though they still did because it, because I know um, thongs. There's a regulation on thongs. I remember at that time. But... The way the way you got around that is um, it was really dumb. Women, they will wear that. They wear a g-string or a thong, but they have to have something over it. So what they did is they had like the the net stocking sheer. You could see through it, but you had to have like a pretend cover to cover it up. Okay. But you weren't allowed to just have your cheeks out because uh, we saw females get arrested for that. Well, they get arrested. They got tickets uh, for doing that. Especially if you was riding on the back of the bike, the police was pulling them over and um, writing them up. If they so yeah, it, it it was a they was trying to regulate that and. Um, when I think about rape culture, because that seems to be like the the conversation now, because because of Bill Cosby and all these other different people, uh, it's not right. And like I said, I put myself out there because um, there are environments where this is very dominant, even in the clubs now. You know, I I was never I never did it in the club to a female that I didn't know, and the females that I did know, and I, if I slapped them on the butt or whatnot. If they were uncomfortable, I didn't know. 
and it's it like when I replay it, well, would you let on that you're uncomfortable if you're like only one or two deep and you're surrounded by a bunch of like you could be very uncomfortable, but showing that weakness, you probably didn't want to do that. You know what I mean? So you'll smile. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, no, no. Just to get out of this situation. I kind of feel like, have you ever been in that where you, you know, something happened and you felt uncomfortable, but you couldn't let on that you was uncomfortable? Um, I've always been very vocal Okay. about being uncomfortable. Um, I was very quick to want to fight or do something. So, mm. um, I wasn't the most quiet person. I generally wasn't by myself ever. Yeah. Either. Yeah. Um, because of that, um, I actually didn't like that negative attention so much so that I took out my piercings because of the reactions I was getting. Yeah. Because you could see them through my shirt. Um, so I wasn't too fond of that kind of environment. Yeah. And I tried my best not to put myself in such a position. Um, because, yeah, I, I was more impulsive, as you've experienced. Right. Um, like with the bottles off the table or um, <laughs> oh, yeah. where I told old boy I didn't know what he was thinking just because he was a frat boy. That. He, he pulled his pants down and stuff. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I wasn't wasn't too pleased with those situations, and I was very verbal about it. Um, there was a, a a friend of mine in Cali. Shout out to Wendy Vaughn. Uh, I got permission from her to share this story, so she said it was okay. Uh, I don't know like the the complete backstory, but they were at a swap meet. Her and her sister and. A guy approached Wendy to get her phone number and Wendy is a very um, she's that female that's like very uh, pleasant like she won't intentionally offend you she's she's not just she's just not built that way so I could see her like playing it off smooth like no you know and maybe she won't even say no uh, maybe not right now or something to that extent and she once she did once she pretty much said he wasn't gonna get the phone number she turned to walk away from him and he geared up and punched her in the back <gasps> and for not giving and, and now I imagine she oh said swap me so we're in LA the biggest swap meet out there at the time that I remember was the Slauson swap meet so I'm pretty sure that that was the place that they were at <laughs> I mean I've been in similar situation not be, a person didn't actually punch me but where they really thought they were going to get the number you tell them no, you diss them or whatever, or, you know, send them on their way. Yeah. And they'll turn around and be like, you weren't that cute anyway or whatever. Right. Or whatever. Men do that. Now, I haven't, I've never done that. I think that's just corny. Uh, just because you don't want me, I'm not going to insult you. Maybe I have when I was drunk. Actually, I have. To. <laughs> I did. I was about to say. Oh, yes, I did. Shout out to TJ. I'm not going to tell that story. But, um, and it wasn't, she wasn't, she didn't deny me. She denied my homeboy, and I saw it. So I decided to be vocal about it. You ain't that cute anyway. <laughs> so you nothing but a thought. <laughs> yeah, well, that thoughts wasn't that uh, word back then, but yeah, yeah, we we use it. So um, I don't know what made I don't know what makes men feel comfortable enough. Maybe this is being just chauvinistic. I think personally, it's not being comfortable. It's the insecurity factor okay. because if someone rejects me. Like, all right, peace, holla. I'm right. going to next individual. Um, if I was just that confident in myself, right, in 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 taking such an approach, yeah. Um, but when you're not confident and a person rejects you, says no. First of all, nobody likes to be rejected. Right. So it takes a bigger person to accept that, taking a stride, yep. keep moving, and it. And second of all, it it is the mature thing to do. But as we all know, that's not. Necessarily, factor, yeah. necessarily the reality for each individual they're just not there maturity wise anyways mm -hmm. um but that's my train of thought well there, there are certain <laughs> females that encourage certain types of behavior i'm gonna give you an example and it messes up for literally all the other females uh, i was in high school playing basketball during lunchtime and there's a young lady now and she's pretty in our community, she's pretty famous. She might be nationally acclaimed now. She's big time stripper. Uh, her name is Nikki, and uh, 
she's known to date, I think, Jason Harden, basketball player and things like that. But she went to our high school her freshman year. So she could have been no more than 14 years old at this time. Mm-hmm. We were playing basketball. She used to wear really tight and revealing clothing. She was very, very thick um, at that age. Like she was built like a grown woman. She walked past the basketball courts. There's about 30 dudes are out there. The ones that's playing basketball and dudes on the sideline. She was by herself wearing, uh, like I said, a very short revealing skirt. Uh, stilet- not stilettos, but really high heels and a tight shirt. She walks by. The game stopped playing. The guy stood up on the side. Every the bell, the playground. She shut it down. She shut it down. And she knew she did because she smiled and looked back. And she had to walk all the way across the court. Not now across that, the court. A situation like that is embarrassing if you're not the type of person that thrives off of that energy. I know it that's is. That's embarrassing. But for her, like I said, she she thrived off that energy because I've heard conversations she's had in uh in my English class. And when she did that, like I said, psychologically I was evaluating the situation. I was part of dudes. I was looking also, but when I look back on it, and I'm like, and she's like I said, she's a stripper now. I was kind of like, well, that kind of makes sense. You always yep. kind of been in that in that realm. Yeah. I can only imagine. She was probably on her way to work, and you didn't even know. No. <laughs> <laughs> but for all the other women that, um, it's it's okay to be googled and want want it to be desired. I'm sure you want me to look at you that way when you walk past me. But it's different when you have... Oh, definitely. I mean, even back then, what female does not want to be validated that she's pretty, that she looks good, that right. she's enticing, that somebody finds her desirable? Right. That doesn't necessarily mean that you want to be groped or um, yeah, that's approach um, directly to be told, hey your boobs look delicious or something or whatever you might not want that right but the look or the wink or the smile is enough to keep you validated and keep you feeling good and so that's why i was segueing to so if females do feel like it's cool to be validated and it's cool to be looked at in a way that's desirable and you're catching the attention of men because it's it's okay to be pretty there's nothing wrong with that uh, men feel like that. Men want to be felt like they have the biggest penises in the world and um, they're the only ones that you've ever had sex with. <laughs> well, for men, it revolves around their penis. Yeah. As far as their performance right. in the bedroom somehow equates their performance in life. <laughs> <laughs> don't judge me. So um, that's, I think, a little different because I don't think a female validates her performance in the bedroom to equate her life um purpose right right or validate her in any other way well what what i was going to say though is what is too far then if i genuinely feel like boom you are beautiful to me your body blah 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 but i don't know you do am i uh is it my uh, well i would think that you that want to, you? to get closer to the person but just when you you see a value in something it's not just oh i just want to get it and be gone right um you're going to be a lot more gentler and a lot more delicate Mm -hmm. um you're probably going to be a little bit more persistent than the next guy that's just coming around for a moment right because you're looking for something for the longer haul Mm -hmm. not to say for life but you're looking for something more than just for tonight. Right. You know, you're not just a fling I'm interested in. No, I've seen you around the way. I've seen how you move, and I'm really feeling it. The, the analogy that I use, um, when I see a pretty flower, there's a lot of pretty, pretty flowers in the world, and I'll stop and I'll smell, but I'll keep moving. But when I see a flower that it's unique and it's just like, I got to have this flower. I'm going to pluck that flower and I'm going to put that flower in my own garden and I'm going to nurture that flower until it becomes whatever it is that becomes because I enjoy that flower so much. When I met you, uh, it was on that same note where I thought you was beautiful. I thought you was gorgeous, but I didn't want to stop there on the physical aspect. I felt like uh, you had qualities about you that were not yet explored. And I wanted to see if those, if I, I wanted to see if I was right about that. And I chose to wanting 
to invest myself and my time to see if those qualities can come about. So I think uh, if a man truly was about his business and being interested, uh, he would do that. But like I said, we're some younger men. I can't say about older men. I don't have any experience in that. You probably can speak to this. We have very weird and immature ways in terms of we approach women. One thing that I know we do is we talked about the death stare. We will stare you like a predator coming across the <laughs> from one corner to another. We will not stop looking. And like I said, if you give any inclination, if you stare at me back, if you blink in my direction, <laughs> I'm coming to get you. Because yeah, I feel like I'm going to interpret that, that you're interested. Well, I mean, you guys are natural hunters. Yeah. Or yeah. predators, obviously. Oh, not predators. <laughs> I mean, that is definitely the look that y'all give. Like, yeah, buddy. I'm about to feast tonight. Yeah. <laughs> well, one of the things that makes you uncomfortable that the way men approach. Maybe not you, like I said, but one of the things that we we have done that you like, oh man, you can change that type of behavior. What can we clean up in order to be approached? I'm not a fan of flashy. Okay. I love All to right. know that a person is stable. Um and they're confident in themselves, not in their materials. If that makes sense. But what if it's like when a person starts talking about all the things that they have or my clothes or you see them constantly adjusting their jewelry or this or that, mm -hmm. um, it's kind of displacing the value. OK, so the way we sometimes will look at a woman's body, uh, a man will put out his jewelry or his car. No, when they're approaching a female. Right, right. That's what I'm saying. Oh. And so we're putting the value in the wrong thing. And so we're trying to, mm -hmm. we're peacocking. And it doesn't. Yeah, like, it's like, come on, don't you want to come ride in this nice, this nice whip or well, don't you? situation? Uh, no, not necessarily. Because <laughs> you might have a Jag, but I might have a Mercedes. Right. You know, so right. that's not always the situation. Um, I think younger females are easier. Um more easily influenced in that respect right um gold diggers because that's what they're looking for those materialistic type things mm -hmm. but if you're looking for a better um or a greater investment that's not something that's really gonna make you go crazy at least it never was for me um now another thing too um sports being athletic mm -hmm. that's very eye-catching for a female generally or just actually being good at something having a talent um so now you're you're talking about things that will actually catch your attention out right well because if you're athletic i'm gonna see that on your body right before you even speak to me right i'm gonna see there's some kind of definition somewhere right i'm gonna see some something mm -hmm. about it mm -hmm. you know um if you're let's say a gamer Nine times out of ten, you're not going to be at a club. You're going to be in a game situation. So I'm going to find you or I'm going to see you mm -hmm. in this setting, in this environment. Um, and there might be something that about that situation that, you know, that might draw me in. So you're, you're uh, long story short, it just kind of feels like you're just saying just be yourself. And the, female, the women that are attracted to you are attracted to you based on those mutual interests and whatnot. I don't have to do a hundred push-ups necessarily to find my wife because the push-ups is not what's going to keep you around me. It's what we share and what we have in common. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the most challenging part. And because it, that involves patience because for every woman that I come across, if I was to approach him, how do I know that this woman enjoys books for me? How do I know this woman enjoys uh, literature or goes to church or we share the same denominator? Like there's so many factors that you got to eliminate and come through. And now, at speaking out loud, I can see. And this why. is where I would say, you know, the physical um, attraction does come first, right? Because you don't know that individual, right? Um, so, what are you drawn to, right? Well, from what you're seeing, maybe they have a talent, maybe they don't. I don't know. They could be the one riding the bench mm -hmm. or passing out the water bottles, mm -hmm. but. Um, you don't know all of that stuff when you first look at a person. So I would say generally the chemistry has to be physical in some way, shape, or fashion. And then maybe that's the first 30 seconds. 
there. Okay, so how then are they going to sustain that attention? I'm talking about the females Mm -hmm. being sustained by the guy. Tell him a joke. Get them to laughing. <laughs> you know, yes, that definitely sir. makes the difference. Yeah. You know. Let me throw you off with this joke. <laughs> with the chicken saving so, the road. I mean, and, and you know, you can <laughs> probably tell a lot. <laughs> chicken cross the road. <laughs> about an individual and their jokes and kind of mentally where they're at a little bit. That's true. Because actually. if you're sitting here telling me this vulgar joke and I'm like, up. Oh, you got something on your mind that I'm not too interested in versus talking about the chicken crossing the road. You know, I might look at you differently if you told me a joke like that. Now, that is actually pretty interesting in terms of I, psychologically speaking. Yeah, like I can communicate. Men, we communicate so much. It's kind of like playing poker. Um, it's not just about what's in your hand. It's about what you're demonstrating. It's little subtle cues about it's what it is. It's generally subtle cues, yes. Yeah, I, I wanted to go back um, in terms of being single and, you know, we're in, well, I'm in my 30s and it becomes a little di- more difficult, I guess, for people in my age group to date because uh, you feel like you've seen a lot. If not, you've seen everything, every type of dude and you've been around and if you've been dating and you feel like you've been wasting your time because there's certain things that pop up, I feel like there's still hope, but you got to kind of have to be open minded towards getting out of your own way. And there's some aspects because you being married, you have to understand and like, yo, there's something I just gonna have to accept about there's some things I like and there's some things that I don't like and things that I don't like. This is it all. It's, it's not like you can categorize the individual, say this is this person and this is this person because it all is just one big mesh of, of what I think it's it. generally what you're willing to settle with mm. is this something you want to wake up to every day for some people it's okay for other people it's not how do we our first impressions or even second impressions how do we how do we get a good lead on it and that's what I was saying so okay a guy is not allowed to whistle at you to get your attention automatically that's communicating something different to you even though I, it might be Hope Mills Road and I can't cross the road so I need to somehow stop you from moving <laughs> so I'm gonna whistle so you stop until I can catch up to you what about A.O. or Skew they, well, you know, something a lot of women are, they're, a lot of, they're offended when men do that they don't don't yell how at about me excuse me ma'am hello <laughs> so if you were walking down the street and a guy was like hey yo woo woo would that, what, it's would that happened make you, many times to me would you stop and, and encourage that I would stop and kind of look at them crazy, wondering why they're trying to get my attention. Yeah. But it could be something so simple, like I left my cup on top of the car. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, so I, I'm not apprehensive initially, but um, I am concerned that you're stopping me a certain way. Okay. But it's not going to stop me from stopping. So that follow-up conversation better be real strong once he gets your attention for real <laughs> for real you better have a, a plan and a half and, I, and I've done that and I know folks are like I'm just trying to let you know you're pretty yeah you yeah. know I mean because it, it's happened to me like I've gone to the post office to get the mail and a guy just you know of course that prey stare right and stuff I'm like if this dude does not stop because I can see out my peripheral yeah yeah staring at me I'm like, he is all in my face. You know, and I turn around with my mean mug. Yeah. And he told me, he's like, you're very, very pretty. Well, actually, he was signaling for me to put my window down. Yeah. I'm like, well, how bad can it be? He's in his car. I'm in my car. So you kind of, you semi-safe. You know? So um, he he told me that. He's like, I just wanted to know you're very, very pretty and stuff. So I've, I've had people pay for my drink in front of my, in the drive-thru? Yeah. In front of me. Or whatever. Yeah, and I, and I think, relay that message through the person. And I and those type of things work, and they don't. There's no signal of mal malfeasance. You know, um, I kind of feel like you're what you're communicating, and it's been effective for me. Once you have, fellas, once you have her attention, have a plan. Don't freestyle it because when you freestyle it, uh, you're gonna come off sounding probably ignorant, immature. It does if you're not a naturally uh, charismatic individual, if you can't just come up with conversation on the spot. And I, I think a lot of times as men, our egos won't allow us to recognize some of our faults in that way because we all don't have a silver tongue. Or if you're just around that person and that person takes your breath away. 
Admit that. So be transparent. Yeah, you know, yeah. write him a letter. Yeah. Uh, but what if I don't know where you live at? I w- can't write write you a letter if I see you at school or on the street. Well, generally, people are drawn to individuals within their area circle or gotcha. Um, people that they're um more in contact with on a regular basis yeah as far as maybe crossing paths not even that necessarily they speak or engage in the same situation scenario or work environment but they cross paths um more than one time um is it wrong for females to shoot their shot what if, how does it like i didn't i have i have experience but it was in different environments um, for when women like what's the difference between men and women in that first impression and how they approach men like what makes us so wrong the way we approach and y'all don't have a wrong way of approaching I've literally never heard a dude like yeah she came at me all wrong <laughs> I've never in my life experienced that ever I'm talking about me and none of my homies like if a female come up so to y'all you y'all have never had a conversation like man this chick try to talk with me and stuff and she was just all wrong in the mouth or that she never, was her never. hair was falling out her weave was older nothing like that uh and y'all sit there and start clowning on females yes that has happened but it but but that's her it's not like i never felt threatened intimidated or anything like that now i've came across some very aggressive women that i was not attracted to and they kept pressing me but it's like i never felt threatened you know what i mean like mm-hmm. If you come like that, then I'm going to come like that also, and we're going to go our own separate ways. But I guess maybe that's the difference in our culture where I don't have to feel threatened. Now, as a woman in an environment with a gang of men, y'all don't have the privilege to feel like I feel. It's kind of, analogy-wise, it's kind of like being black in America where there's certain things that white men can get away with and feel comfortable because most of the time you're in your environment where... So you're going to tell me all those times that you've gotten free meals in the evenings when you've gone on your little truck driver scapades or whatever uh-huh. and chicks are sitting there winking at you or whatever giving you slipping you free food <laughs> and <laughs> joking with you or shaking their hips in an extra way that you so notice and call them out on it <laughs> what about that's it? not coming at you yeah but like like i said like but i don't feel a type of way about it like i've never been offended by a way a females approach me i've never been offended okay. i've been mad probably uh a, a few times because like i said i've came across some very aggressive women women uh one woman and one, i think that's probably maybe the bigger key the aggression that you come with it's all about that energy. and i think that that makes a difference with um females too it's about that you energy. got an aggressive dude come up here, you know, grab you by your neck or something. Oh, you gonna talk to me? Yeah. Wasn't it you that you said somebody, one of your guys in the club did that? He grabbed a girl, like by the arm or something. <laughs> I'm not going. I'll tell him myself. I'm not going. <laughs> <laughs> that may have happened. That may have happened a time or two. Um, yeah, but like I said, it it, it kind of depends on the environment and what's allowed. Um, we've never participated in any type of rapey type deals no i'm uh, talking about in the club scenario. yeah like you're coming home with me oh yeah I've and done then that. dude was <laughs> yeah yeah i've done that they slap the hand off or something no the melania trump <laughs> no 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 i told you that that happened to me a girl was dancing yeah a girl was dancing with another dude and as i was walking by her she grabbed my arm to get my attention and I snatched my arm away. I'm like, yo, how are you trying to get my attention? You got your booty in this She truck. was trying to get at you. So no. you were offended. I, I actually was offended. So she was trying to catch. Come, Bell, come on now. You you got your booty in the dude's crotch and you trying to get my attention. Like, that's just, that's not, I think she, anybody. She was trying to get at you. No, I mean, that's, that, actually, I was offended by that. That was crazy. Cause I don't like I don't know this dude. That's how dudes get killed. See, we're not talking. I'm offended because we're not talking about. Um, we're not talking about like I said the way she approached me. If if she wasn't dancing with dude and she grabbed me, I wouldn't have reacted the way I did. But we're in a club. I don't know this guy. We're in a in a in the hood. Like no man, I don't even know. And then you're not cute, so you're not worth me getting shot. Oh, it all boils down to not being cute. It kind of does. See what I'm talking about? That's what I was saying. The physical, your nails, your hair, your whatever. Are you put together? That, see, 
it boils down to the physical aspect. Oh no, her skirt ain't short enough. No, that, her no. boobies ain't flopping out yet. So mm -mm. no, it's not about the body. But yeah, you do. You gotta let. You gotta make me think about. Are you worth the risk? And she was not worth the risk. It was. It was immediately apparent, and it was like. You got the audacity. <laughs> you just point something out to me. I probably women in this episode. I'm I'm looking crazy, but I don't care. Like I said, just kind of learn from my experience and um, from the insight from. And I'm to me, I'm very mild compared to a lot of other guys that not just in my circle, but people that are known and the way that we approach and things like that. And like I said, I think that we the proper way to approach women is to authentically be yourself, and you don't have to go and search. And do anything extra if she's for you. Yeah, I would I would agree with that. Nah. You know, if you're in a club, buy her a drink. You know, can I have a little conversation? Well, we're not we're not promoting alcohol and, and drinking and anything like that. <laughs> if you're at Starbucks, get her offer her to get her a drink. Right on. At Starbucks, she might not want the unicorn drink. She might want a macchiato, something like that. You know, but I mean, there's many different scenarios that she could be in. Yo. Um, to get a person's attention and I think um, offering to pay for something gets a person's attention I don't care what situation you're in you could be at Walmart and they're buying a loaf of bread and you're like can I get that for you you know um, whatever it is um, can I help you with your groceries something like that carry yeah. them to your car yeah yeah um, just just that general gentleman kind of um, create that ambiance yeah. that'll get that'll get her attention. I'm not gonna say it's gonna sustain it now because right. she might not look be looking for a gentleman, but it'll get her attention. In other and words, it will cause her to think. Don't create a hostile environment where she feels defensive. Mm -hmm. So yelling at you from across the street, I'm sure that won't Ew! make. You and so the whole block now is turning around looking at you like, man, who do yelling at? It, it doesn't create something that's very comfortable um, for the everyday woman. Um, the redeeming factor in, in this whole conversation, there's one thing outside. There's something that you kind of enlightened me the, that we can come when we approach you. We got to create a better environment so that you don't have to feel like I got to protect myself. Shout out to Sue. Is that that is testosterone? She did say that today. Yeah. And and that's not... Some men can't... They can't help that part in terms of that aggression. But if you make us aware of our approach, we can definitely adjust and change and, and change that. So uh, that actually did help me today. Uh, the way... It, it may not be that I'm being aggressive, but if I'm speaking in a particular way, especially if I'm dress, addressing someone that's not Very used dominating. to... Very dominating. I got I to gotta, I gotta switch up on that. Nobody likes that. Nobody likes to feel like they're being backed in a corner. Not even men. When you're talking to other men, you can't communicate like that. And speaking of communication, there was a scripture that dealt directly with um, it, it. The context was in terms of evangelism and in terms of maintaining your personal relationships. But I kind of feel like it can apply to anything where I'm paraphrasing the scripture in the book of Colossians. It essentially said, let your speech always be seasoned with grace. And what that essentially meant is that um, salt is used as a reference all throughout the Bible. And I, I accidentally did some research on salt. Back in the Old Testament, they used to put salt on the sacrifices before they burnt it up to God as a flavor, aroma, blah, 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 things of that nature. And so our speech is a sacrifice. It's a representation of what comes out of our heart. And so if we're not careful about what comes out of our mouth and what comes out of our heart, um, not only do we, we can come off as offensive, um, the thing that we're offering to that person, which is the way we communicate, um, can be rejected. Same thing in our prayer life, um, the, the fruit of our lips, blah, 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 blah. So when we approach women, especially as Christian men, I feel like we have to change the way we approach and remember the scripture that um, we're not of the world. So we're not going to physically, we're all going to be attracted to that initially. But we have to come and bring a game plan where it's like, well, let me show you a representation of what I can become and approach you like I will. Hopefully someone will approach my mom or somebody who will approach my sister. I don't want anybody yelling at my sister from across the street and I don't want anybody approaching my mom any old kind of way. I'll, I'll be actually really I actually I was in that environment. I've seen men because my mom back in the day was seen to be very attractive and and. 
I, men weren't blatant, blatant, but as me being a young man, I saw certain things and intent behind it, and it made me very uncomfortable. So I never want to put another woman in that type of uh, situation. So there is biblical principles behind that. <laughs> Nothing? You good? No, I'm good. All right. We actually had another subject to talk about, but I feel like, you know, we had a full conversation. You know, the ins and outs were personal anecdotes and whatnot. There was one more story I wanted to share. It wasn't about me. It was actually about you. About me? Yeah, I wasn't even, and I wasn't there in this situation. And I wonder if you weren't married, if this was something that would have caught your attention. Uh, At FTCC, you're walking. Hey, you're pretty. Boom. You said the dude ran into a pole because he was looking at you so hard. Oh, yeah. I forgot (laughs) about that. His homies were clowning him for real. What the hell caught your attention, though? I wasn't drawn to him in any kind of way, but that was hilarious. It created I would have just asked, if he would have came to me, I would have just wanted to know who his name is. <laughs> just before the fact that he took one on the pole. <laughs> <laughs> took one for the team, y'all. You sacrificed your life. <laughs> yeah. And I wasn't, I mean, I wasn't expecting it. I was just walking out of the building out of class, but um, yeah. he really did. Yeah. He ran into a pole. Yeah. And, and I mean, sometimes when you, you be, I was married then. Yeah, you when were. When that happened, huh? Yeah, you were. Yeah, I think that's what made it even funnier. Uh, the fact that I had no intentions or no inklings. He wasn't even on my radar. And if I could be honest, so. man, sometimes y'all women, y'all can, y'all don't do this, but men come out of character when we're around you all because. We so desperately want your attention and your approval and your love. We want everything about you that we do things that just like Chris, logic is thrown out the way. So just like, <laughs> as he said, the dad opened the door and he closed it, even though he's looking directly at that. Sometimes we do and we say things that even though we know it might make you upset or angry, we're not thinking about that part. It's just uh, something that's short circuited in our reasoning and we just do dumb things. We yeah, I mean, and I mean, that situation totally threw me off because, um, one, I'm married. Yeah. And then two, that... That's because you're married don't mean you stop being attractive. It, well, you know, but you stop thinking about that. You don't necessarily think about that all the time. Yeah. When you're married, you're more on the mindset of <laughs> my married responsibilities and obligations to the household. Yeah. So when something like that does happen, especially being such a younger guy, you know, he didn't know I was in my 30s. Um, yeah. He was probably barely 20, you know, and so it was just made me chuckle as a validation, I guess. Like, oh, I guess I still got something that draws people. Yeah. You know, didn't know what that was. <laughs> I was all covered up. It's not like I was slashing anything, but, um, uh, it's nice makes you chuckle Dianica, uh who goes to our church shout out to D she said uh, if a dude really wants my attention he'll put knees to chest and it's a military term meaning you're going to run across the street and you're going to approach me with sensibility and um, you'll get my attention that way um, and so uh, in all my travels and all the travels of my homies uh, we've learned that you will what you articulate in this episode um, if we approach you in a way that you feel safe and you don't have to feel the defensive, uh, it provides for an easy conversation. And my practical advice, again, using the biblical terms, um, be choosy in the way that you communicate. Um, it's OK to put a filter on because uh, you are tr- not that you're trying to impress, but you're trying to show her who you are. And if you're trying to be flashy or presenting a false narrative of yourself, it, it's going to be apparent and it's going to show and you're going to have problems really in the future because you've shown her something that it's not authentic and not, you know, who you Well, are. I mean, you can't keep that curtain up too long. No. You know, All they say, I don't remember who, who said it, but um, after three months is that all the curtains start coming down. You really start seeing the person for who they really are. Yeah. Um, and I mean, it, it's, it could be, some people can hold that curtain up for just a little bit longer. Yeah. You know, but um, it won't last forever. Women, I'm sorry on behalf of all men if you've ever been disrespected. For all the women that I have disrespected, I apologize. I didn't know any better. Once I learned better, though, that's how I got married because I had to do better. 
I had, to, I had to try something different. Didn't want to be a Mac Daddy. I just wanted a wife. You just wanted a wife. That's all. For real. Yeah. That's all. I didn't. That's I didn't. why it took you so long. <laughs> 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 it took a while. I didn't say that was immediate. You know, I had to learn some things. But thank God for the for the road. Let's travel. Amen. <laughs> One that we got, we do got to talk about that in terms. Did we? I think we had made plans to talk about sex histories and does that matter and things of that nature. I don't know. That might be too sensitive, huh? Do sex histories matter? Sex histories? Yeah, like the person's background and who they've been with. It definitely counts. It with does me. matter. It counts on me. Now, with, with that I wouldn't on. definitely give a count. Why not, Bill? <laughs> or a checklist or anything of, yeah, look, these have been my previous partners or whatever. Why not? I had this question. Why about, not? Because yeah. that affects dudes psychologically. Because like you said, every male wants to believe that his wife is his own and only has been his own. Absolutely. <laughs> 100%. So, I mean, 100%. if it's just one person prior, that's not cool. For yeah. y'all. Well, I'm not going to speak for every man in that regards, but like I, I'm saying that like kind of out of jest. Um, I'm very aware that we all have a past, and if I if I'm doing it, women can do it also in terms of sleeping with different people. So, and that's another thing too. It takes a very special person to be able to accept those kind of things and move on from that. Yeah. And not hold it over the individual. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, that 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 this, for me that didn't come overnight. Um, I actually it a lot of my thinking changed once I became saved because it's kind of like Apostle Paul. He again, I'm paraphrasing. He articulated such as some of were, are you when you want to go judge somebody and the things that they do, whether you're a thief or fornicator or things like that. Like, yo, I was just like just like that person. I did that, and so why not think? Well, my wife is an individual, also. She's gonna have a past. She's gonna do things. So it helped me appreciate and sit back and like. Well, I don't have too much to say to the point where I don't even ask the question anymore because um, if God's forgiven me and if my slate is cleaned, um, same can be done for her. However, if we try to get to know each other, give up them digits, homie. What's that? What's that number like? <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what we're doing, uh, subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Make sure to hit the like button. What you laughing about? What if I hand you a blank card? <laughs> you said the blood washed it. The blood prevails. The blood prevails. No. Like you did in the olden days. Uh, again, if you like our channel, if you like the conversation, if you enjoy the podcast, subscribe to it. Uh, leave us comments as you have been doing. Again, I don't appreciate any of you all who said that y'all don't like listening to me over Bell. Um, I don't care about you neither. Of course, I'm joking. Shout out to you, Tiff. She's the one that told me that. Um, shout out to all of our supporters that are constantly turning in, uh, tuning in, Vernice, uh, Vicky, Jennifer. Um, these are people that I interviewed and, and things like that. So uh, we don't have a lot of followers. However, uh, I can tell that the conversations that we're having, we're making impact because we're talking about real things and things that people can identify, associate with. And plus, I believe Bell and I, we have the ministry of transparency. We're going we gonna to bring it. <laughs> You're going to get the real from us. And like I said, for me, whether I look crazy or not, it is what it is. <laughs> no shame on your part. At all. I know. Don't Your care. buddies from the Barretts can attest to that. <laughs> <laughs> that is another story for another day. We love y'all. Appreciate you. Peace. <laughs>
bands that I got to lead. House full of mouths that I got to feed. Quite a few places I opt to be. And that many more faces trying not to see them good. Gave too many chances, y'all plan. Focus on advancement, y'all stand. Bottom to the top, I'm all in. Cut the check, I'm ready to cash out. Pay you right out, my life and mash out. They don't know what that narrow path about. Alternate detour took all of that route. Dreams that you sold won't do for me. Never do what I do for myself. With friends like you, I need more foes. Y'all tapping out like Morse code. Only for the benefits, elevator limitless. Mansion in the sky, please show me where the kitchen is. Birds don't fly around here, where the pigeon is. Oh, so gone, won't change for the dividends. Whip it, microwave it till it's working. They intimidated by the standards. We all cool and don't forget your manners. Cause all my homies people with the hammers. Money coming, money go, yeah. People come and people go. They do. If you're sneaking on the low, yeah. I can't. I can't rock with you no more. Money coming, money go, yeah. People come and people go. They go. They go. I swear I need something. Ain't got nothing on the time I've been patient, no excuses Trying to perfect my grind All I studied was the real Now the face point they self out Don't need favors or handouts No, you can't even help out Keep your dime piece and your fine freaks I got a whole hundred, I ain't full stunning Keep an anvil and some dynamite For them coyotes that be road running I speak a different language, this a foreign Culture, this why most I'm just ignoring Popping bottles, I'ma keep on pouring Game of life, I'ma keep on scoring Santa Claus ain't coming down my chimney Fire burning, promoting Olympics. The road that I took was paved with your intentions. And all I like you is crickets, no chimney. Tomorrow ain't promised. You can't borrow my feelings. So deaf ears, your complaints will fall on money like coming, gym. Money coming, money coming. People coming, people go. If you're sneaking on the low, yeah. I can't rock with you no more. Money coming, money coming. Yeah. Take no more of what the world's feeding me. Tell me, is it worth it? Am I worth it? Do I got a purpose? A little purpose? I just gotta know. I gotta know. Do I got a purpose? What was I made for? Why am I here? I feel like every night I'm filling this pillow with tears dripping down my face. Yeah, I got a home, but still feeling out of place. I ain't never had no place. I'm dinner without a plate. Connecticut. Maybe I should take this blade in Connecticut So if it connects to this flesh then I cut The demons in my ear yelling telling me I suck My homies telling me to man up Life's tough and anchor sinking But I'm with it in handcuffs I'm drowning But nobody can see it like a living human being But yet they call it a fetus I'm steady being defeated But they just want to focus on my bad grades But Weezy told me get that money flip the mad page and two chains threw away that school thing I can do the same but whip around in a new range It's all the same Get the money and blow it What the education did it A pitching up on the corner Strike three Tell me what I'm living for Money, power, respect Women that get in the drawers Impressing people that'll never want to get involved in my life They just showing love What is love? Then my heart sinks Then my heart speaks It says gotta be Gotta be Gotta be more than this Cause I can't take no more Of what the world's feeding me Tell me is it worth it? Am I worth it? Do I got a purpose? A little purpose? I just gotta know I gotta know Go, go, do I be like her? Go shorty, shorty, go shorty, shorty, go Dollars flipping as I'm dripping down the stripper pole All they see is a body, they don't see a soul And I put me on social media to get some views Here's a couple of likes, throw a couple of tweets Cop a bottle of Moscato just to get in my sheets 
Three shots of a macchiato gonna keep me from sleep Cause all I dream about are my mistakes and repeat Are you dealing with rape? Do you struggle with sex? I've been living cause the both of them are giving me stress I got character flaws, I consider the best Dudes tell me that they care as they stare at my chest People tell me I be open, need to cover my breast. People tell me I provoke them with the way that I dress People tell me just get over it and get out your mess Then they quiet down when they see I'm messing with death uh, need a second to breathe, I have been ready to leave Family don't really care, they ain't ready to grieve Ready to bleed, who ready to bleed for me, huh? Deep in the sea, I'm choking to breathe, giving up Impressing people that'll never wanna get involved in my life, they just showing love But what is love? Then my heart sinks, then my heart speaks And says, gotta be, gotta be Gotta be more than this Cause I can't take no more what the world's feeding me Tell me is it worth it? Am I worth it? Do I got a purpose? A little purpose? I just gotta know I gotta know Do I have a purpose? Sunrise This light swiftly spills Trickling into your window With the subtle Yet majestic luminance Into the very depths so, darkness exits as I answer. I'm the person you've been looking for. No, I'm the purpose you've been looking for. No, I'm the person with the purpose you've been looking for. And you've searched high and low, getting high and low, like where am I to go? Counselors tell you what's in your mind, but no, the way that I designed you to be mine, I know you're broken. I'm the only one that can fix you, cause if you can fix you, it would've fixed you Looking at drugs, they will only addict you The enemy lies, he will only convict you Enter my love and I will never evict you My son is the door, Holy Spirit will lift you Give me your worries and cares, I'll get them resolved Fear, misery, tears, it'll dissolve Aches, pains, even your flaws I'll give you my all Impressing people that'll never wanna get involved In your life, they just showing love But I am love and my love sings, and when I sing, I say it's so much, so much, so much more than this And I can't take no more of what I've seen in me You asked, are you worth it? I die for you because of your purpose You're so worth it, let me show, show you The Father has a kingdom for you. His name is Jealous Jealous. He burns with desire for you. Like a snowflake that falls from the sky. No one is the same as the other. Hi, this is Regina. Hi, this is Regina with Simone B. Catering, and you're listening to the Hawk and Bell Podcast. Hua. Hua? Nobody say no Hua. This ain't the Army Bell. Test, test, one, two, one, two. How do you say it? Boo, school me. Maybe I deserve a spanking for that. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta keep a straight face Sometimes you gotta tell yourself that you lack faith Sometimes you don't wanna be gracious 
Sometimes just admit it, you've been mighty impatient. I'm trying to get myself together, dog. Oh, I'm trying to shelter in this weather, dog. Oh, seems like I've been lost for forever, dog. Oh, I'm trying to piece it all together. I'm puzzled by the pieces and they measurements. Shouldn't it fall together like these words and these letters? I've been thinking I'm far too clever. Do I need to do better than just showing off my demeanor? Might pull out an umbrella cause they saying he rain forever. <laughs> I'm trying to get myself together, dog. Oh, I'm trying to shelter in this weather, dog. Oh, seems like I've been lost for forever, dog. Oh, I'm trying to piece it all together. Oh, God, oh, God, find another way. I'm so down, so down, so down. Oh, God, oh, God, find another way. I'm so down, so down, so down. Find another way. I'm so down, so down, so down. Oh God, oh God. Find another way. I'm so down, so down, so. Hear me out as I confess. A series of unfortunate events My turn into a two-faced like Harvey Dent Can depend on the circumstances of my life You know I gotta take my chances Cause life weighs you down when you least constant And strife comes around when you least expect it When you're trying to get it right, others are trying to correct it As if that ever came that close to perfection I just wanna fulfill my passion I put it to action, am I ready? It ain't even a question I die for a cost, make the whole world pause But at the end of the day, I don't need no applause I just give it to you raw, couldn't dip it like a saw I want to come to the numbers, I pursue my call <laughs> Man, I swear I got it all planned out I just wanna stand out but the angle happened never, never get the cracking up in any page in the plans now. It's in his hands, it's in his hands. Everyone's fate is in his hands. But making mistakes is the choice that you pick. When feet for my sin, do you understand? Or you don't wanna listen to this music? Cause you ashamed of living what is true. Art is just art, don't get it confused. Infuse a message and don't try to refuse. Ain't no fire if no one like the fuse. My desire is for you to be you. Cause I stay working on myself. Oh God, so help me. Find another way. I'm so down, so down, so down. Oh God, oh God. Find another way. I'm so down, so down, so down. Oh God, oh God. Find another way. I'm so down, so down, so down. Oh God, oh God. Find another way. I'm so down, so down, so. I'm trying to find another way. I'm so down, so down, so down. Oh God, oh God, I'm trying to find another way. I'm so down, so down, so down. Oh God, oh God, I'm trying to find another way. I'm so down, so down, so down. Oh God, oh God, I'm trying to find another way. I'm so down. Welcome back to the Hawk and Bell Podcast. Yeah. Written and illustrated Anna Dudney. Yeah. Lama, 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 Rapper Jama. Feels along without his mama. Baby Lama wants a drink, but mama's at the kitchen sink. Oh no. Lama, Lama, Rapper Jama. Calls down to his Lama, Lama, Mama. Baby Lama hums a tune. Mama says that she'll be up soon. Lama, Lama, Rapper Jama. That's when, that's when baby llama, yeah, she starts to fret. Then and then the baby, you see nothing yet. Llama, 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 red pajama. Llama, llama, red pajama, wolf is up before. 